Okay. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Actually, that's out of order, but whatever. Wherever you happen to be, welcome to the Groovy Podcast. Uh, my name is Ken Cousin, podcasting from Marlboro, Connecticut. And, and uh, I'm Baruch Sadogurski, podcasting from Sunnyvale, California. Well, how are you doing, Baruch? Um, I'm fine. How, how are you? Well, I think I've finally recovered from my trip to India, you know, for great conf out there. Yep. That was a lot of fun, but boy, is that a lot of hours in the plane, at least for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a long flight. It is. But everybody was very friendly out there. The, it's very well organized. They had uh, quite a few attendees. I, I, I don't know the actual number. I got the feeling it was something around uh, 150, something like that. Oh, okay. And it was just a two-day conference. So one day had all the sessions in it, and then the next day was more workshop-oriented. And they had uh, several workshops going simultaneously. I did one mostly on Java 8 stuff, especially with Groovy. Um, let's see who else was there. Bert Beckwith uh, did um, a couple of talks, especially his uh, one on GORM, a lot of uh, new features there, or uh, you know, being careful with some existing features. Uh, Soren uh, Glossius was there as well, talking about several things. And then uh, there were many others. I, I don't have a list right at hand, but they I expect that most of the videos will become available relatively soon. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Uh, it was also very, that was my first trip to India, and that was a bit of an adventure. So I, I really enjoyed mm -hmm. that. Did you, did you do any sightseeing? Um, I wasn't going to do a whole lot, but uh, Puneet Bell kept uh, organizing things. So we wound up going with him a lot. Bert is one of these guys who goes everywhere. So he was doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, I tend to be more of a sedentary individual unless somebody pushes me in that direction. And uh, Puneet was the one who kept organizing a trip to various uh, uh, historical sites and everything. So that was very helpful, and, and uh, he did a really good job. So I, I really enjoyed my time there. It's just for the – except for the hours and hours and hours in the plane. Of course, you know all about that. Yeah, so I, I've never been to India. Oh my! Really? Out of all yes. the traveling you've done, you've yes, done yes, I was I was close enough once when I worked in in BMC Software. They have a huge office in Pune, and I was about to go, and then I I quit, so that didn't work out. Huh. But eventually, eventually, I, I I will I will I think it's invaluable, you know. Well, I'm sure they'll yep. be doing great comp there next year again, so uh, keep it in mind. Um, I know this is out of order, but that does remind me, of course, that Great Conf in EU and in the U.S. both have their call for papers open at the moment. Uh, the one in Copenhagen, we got a link in the show notes, but the one in Copenhagen, I think the call for papers is uh, only open for another week. To yes, yes, I think I think that's that's about right. And the exciting news uh for for great con for you is that this year soren um did a little uh, pivot i would say and added um i don't know if it will be a day or a track um which is related for for uh, to devops right and i think i think it's a great thing to do for for many reasons me personally <coughs> Um, of course, as Jeff Rog, um is in the devops business uh, it will be much more easy to to justify uh, but but also groovy is one of the um i would say best suited uh, um, programming languages for, uh, for for devops and and we see the adoption and one of the uh, shining examples uh, is of course what jenkins does with their pipeline plugin um, which is, um, you know, a, a, a groovy DSL uh, that allows you to automate your continuous integration and development environment, which is exactly DevOps. So, um, so I would say it's it might look like uh, um, Soren just took one of the hot topics and and artificially merged it into GreatConf just to bring more sponsors and 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 more attendees. But I think that's more natural mix and and a bigger synergy and i think that one plus one here should definitely yield more more than two 
Yeah, I think he uh, he's very excited about it. I expect that he'll get a lot of submissions regarding that. Uh, so it should be quite interesting to see what sorts of topics come up specifically on that day. Uh, Great Kampf in Copenhagen is May 31st to June 2nd of this year. As I say, they've got another week. The deadline for submissions, I think, is uh, January 31st, the end of the month. Uh, meanwhile, the U.S. Great Conf, the one in Minneapolis, is held from July 26th to 28th, and that just opened, I believe, its call for papers, and therefore they've got another month. I believe they end their call for papers at the end of February, so February 28th for that one. Uh, so at any rate, we can check that off the list. We've got both of those covered. Yep. Now, in terms of uh, new releases, I should mention that Jeb released 1.1. It's uh, not a lot of stuff there, but there uh, there was a, an announcement in the Google group by uh, Marcin Erdman that Jeb 1.1 is available. Support for URL fragment identifiers for navigation and performance improvements to the unexpected pages feature. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds interesting. Uh, every time I've used Jeb, I've really enjoyed it. I, I wish I did more with it, and I, I hope it gets more and more publicity. Uh, anybody who uses Selenium for testing really ought to consider Jeb. It's got a very elegant page model, and it works beautifully for browser-driven automation. Exactly, and that goes back again to the synergy between Groovy and, uh, and DevOps. In mm. this regard, I can say that our um, uh, release enablement tool uh, team in, in JFrog, those who automate um, the release processes uh, in JFrog, are now very, um, I would say, uh, uh, big uh, groovy adapters, and they, they do amazing stuff um, just because groovy is such a great fit for the continuous integration and delivery processes. And and Jeb, of course, as Jenkins Pipeline, and of course as Gradle, uh, are all very big parts in it, and, and they're all groovy. I think we got a few more things to point out about that later in, in our podcast today, so it looks like we're going to have a running theme. That's very good. Uh, the other new releases, uh, Grails is now at 3.1.15. That doesn't affect the 3.2 line, of course. Uh, but 3.1 has another bug fix release with some minor enhancements. And, of course, Groovy, this is uh, interesting. Whenever they have to go through the Apache process to do a release, that's uh, significant. Groovy is now on 2.4.8 with uh, bug fixes for static typing and inner classes and traits and some performance and memory issues. And, and, and here we are back to the, to the release process, right? Um, uh, so here I have some uh, insights as, uh, you know, as being the provider of the, of the software that is used, uh, that used for uh, a groovy uh, release. Can you hear me well? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I can now. Go ahead. All right. So, for being a software provider for for big parts of the of the Groovy release in terms of both Artifactory and Bintray, and um, um, so when when we first started releasing um, under Apache, um, this process is a little bit painful, uh, just because uh, the Apache Foundation have very strict rules of what can you do and what cannot you do, what you can automate and what you can't automate. Uh, just one of the examples uh, are, is, for example, artifact signing. Of course, all the artifacts should be signed with uh, mm, with the key pair uh, of um, of Apache, and you are not allowed to uh, um, put those keys, the pri the private key, anywhere um, uh, on the net. And that means that no server in the world can automate this signing process just because you cannot put the private key um, and transfer it over the wire at all. Uh, so that means b b at least local steps, not necessarily manual, but they have to be local. And um, uh, also um, uh, Apache Foundation have this process of voting, so the artifacts should be staged um, uh, for, for, for other members to be able to download, run, and see, and then vote for or against the release. Um, so there, we had to do a um, bunch of changes fr from the, our, our 
um, original release process that was built uh, in back in the days of uh, of pivotal uh, and um, <coughs> Now, eventually, with uh, a, a resource dedicated to it, and that's, of course, Dr. Paul King, who worked on uh, automating the build, and with all the tools in place, with the changes, I think that we are at the point where the release is um, almost automated. Um, I think just, you know, um, run a command to create the staging build, and then run another command once the vote um is is in and the the release is approved so, uh, and and the release is done and uh, if i'm not uh, in error that's the case now and that by definition means that we can release as as frequent as um, as we want well that's as you say that's the heart of devops right there i mean we're trying to remove the friction involved in getting from code to production and it's of course uh, all 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 in uh, groovy right of course very Needless good to mention yep uh so i'm sure gradle's involved in there somewhere of course the build is uh, is in gradle and uh, all the all the automation is a bunch of rest apis around the artifactory um, taking the build through those repositories of staging and distribution etc and then of course the um, the release on bintray is integration between the artifactory and bintray and bunch of rest api calls to the uh, to the REST APIs of those tools. And that's, of course, very important because the REST API lies in the heart of um, any uh, of any automation. And uh, Groovy makes it very easy to um, interact with those APIs. And I guess we have uh, some uh, news item here about um, Groovy trait on adding HTTP client capability to any class and of course that's for the sake of using those REST APIs. So here we go with another very nice uh, trick um, to use Groovy as a part of your DevOps uh, right, that's setup. A, that's a GitHub gist uh, that was put together by, all right, I'm sure I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Renato um, Atades? Potentially A T H A Y D E S. Atadis sounds right. It could be. I'm mm -hmm. sure. I hope somebody will let us know. At any rate, I always like it when somebody actually finds a good usage for traits. Uh, as someone who came through the Java world originally, I don't tend to think that way. You know, it's still not the natural way of thinking for me. So to see somebody use traits for a very productive mechanism is always useful for me and he just added HTTP client capabilities to any class by implementing this trait and there's a there's a gist for it and a test case uh, put a link in there uh, you use that segue in order to get to the HTTP part uh, I'm, I was planning to use the Gradle segue to talk about a couple of little Gradle notes by the way so we'll cover both uh, one thing is I'm somewhat embarrassed to say I apparently was not subscribed to the Gradle newsletter I had no idea that I wasn't subscribed but there is a simple website that we link to on uh, the show notes. I think it's just newsletter.gradle.com. And that will both give you a little form where you could sign up as well as showing, uh, currently it's showing the last three issues. And there's a lot of things going on in the Gradle world, a ton of stuff. And I was uh, unaware of some of it, and I'm glad that I'm now subscribing to that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about Gradle, I saw a, a quick tweet that there was, uh, some bash and Z shell completion added for Gradle. So this idea is you can hit tab and you get very fast completion for Gradle tasks in both current projects and sub projects. Uh, Gradle command line interface switches like dash dash parallel, common Gradle properties, you know, all sorts of things. Now I've been using all my Z shell for quite some time and that's got a Gradle plugin in it. I don't think this is related to that. I think this is more native for bash or Z shell but it still looked like it was easy to add to your existing system. I just haven't had a chance to try it out yet, but it looks very cool. Uh, yeah, so, but but again, definitely go ahead and, and use on my Z shell, and you have it all for years now, so now we're all set. I assume this will they'll play nicely together, though, I'm guessing. Yep. So. Uh-huh. Now, of course, one of the big news items in the Grails world is that uh, there was finally a release of the early access version of the Grails 3 book. 
Now I've got a, a tab here to that. It's called Grails 3, a practical guide to application development. The, uh, at least that's the title of the web page. The book cover looks like it says Practical Grails 3, a hands-on guide to Grails. And the book is by Eric uh, Helgeson. He's been working on this, we know, for quite some time, and he finally released it. Now, I, of course, bought my copy right away. Did you take a look? Hey, no, I didn't see it yet. Well, I bought it, and I even actually read the thing. You know, I, I tried to go through as much as I could, not in great detail, but as much as I could. It's interesting. It's clear that the book is written in ASCII doc because the early release version comes to you in HTML form. You actually get the... Uh, basically a zip file with the web page and all the attended additional uh, files inside it, the CSS styles and everything, so that you open it up in a browser and read it that way. And as someone who's spent a lot of time with ASCII doc, I'm quite familiar with that process. Uh, according to uh, Eric, he sold like uh, 200 of them in the first week. He was having a sale at the time. I think they were going for like 20 bucks a piece. Uh, I'm not sure what the price is now, but it's close to that. I, I do have to say it still feels early, you know, in the early access part of this. It doesn't feel like we're close to beta. There's still sections that are marked as to-dos. There's a lot of uh, sections that are not necessarily complete yet, but there are some very interesting sections in there. There's, there's a section on using the Spring Reactive capabilities. There's a section on deploying to the cloud, you know, the Amazon Web Services and everything. And this is in addition to your normal introductory Grails 3 stuff involving domain classes, services, or controllers. So it looks like uh, it's it's going to be under development for a while, but it's uh, going to ultimately be a great addition to what we have available. Uh, that's, that's great. Yep, I'll probably take a look at it soon enough. Just didn't have the time. Sure. Uh, at any rate, the link is... Uh, grails3book.com and we have it in the show notes. So for anybody who's interested, um, I know Eric is interested in any comments that you might have on it, any feedback you might want to have. I, I managed to talk to him briefly on Slack, uh, on, which is a reminder that Grails has a Slack channel and, and that was very helpful as well. By the way, he mentioned something to me that I added to the show notes very late. He and Bobby Warner put together they, something they're calling Gamda which is Groovy Lambda. It's basically a way of um, showing how to, uh, it's a Groovy framework for building AWS Lambda functions, which is very promising. I mean, AWS Lambda is that whole function as a service approach. Uh, you wanted to say something about that? Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's uh, exciting news. And, and uh, I heard Sir, uh, Sergey Gorov spoke about it in our a Russian podcast, and I really, really die to see to see that that happening because at the moment um, uh, working with Lambda with with Java is quite painful because it basically means you need to build a project and and then uh, uh, and then upload a jar file into it. Um, the day we will be able to use Lambda as Lambda should be used. And then p that means write a, a closure uh, right right there, and this closure will will run when someone hits this REST API endpoint. That will be uh, like another huge step um, in 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 terms of uh, uh, Groovy being useful for the DevOps and the serverless um, notions that we do speak about all day today. Yeah, at the G3 Summit, uh, Dan Woods, our ever popular Dan developer, uh, did a talk on using Groovy with the cloud, and I he did a live demo of deploying something Groovy related onto AWS Lambda. My impression was like everything else Amazon infrastructure related, it's way too complicated, but anywhere where you can simplify that process looks to be a great benefit, and this... Um, this uh, framework, this Gamda framework that Eric and Bobby put together, looks like uh, all they did is they, they published a, a, a gist about it as well as a test case. Uh, Eric mentioned that he uh, he uses it to charge Stripe when people buy the Grails 3 book, interestingly enough. So there's definitely uh, the whole eating your own dog food section there. So it's not real do well documented yet, but there are examples built into the GitHub repo. Uh, it looks like the beginnings of a very interesting mechanism. I, I'm definitely looking forward to digging into that a bit more. Yep. 
Okay, going back to our regular list of topics, um, there's an interesting tweet by, and I think it was uh, Constantine Kapolonis, the, the guy who wrote the, the um, Java testing with Spock Manning book, but he the tweet that he put up was from an article by Russell, is it Winder or Winder? Uh, I guess it's you know what? I don't know. Winder. I know he's he's a he's a groovy doc, you know. Uh, but at any rate, he wrote an article for a, an online journal called "Why Is Spock Such a Big Deal?" And not only is it an interesting article about Spock, it gives you a pretty good history of testing on the JBM. You know, from the J Unit three days, the transition to J Unit four. He he talked a lot about test NG, and in the end, he talks about how basically Spock has everything any of the above had and better along with the mocking framework built in and he loves the parameterized test mechanisms and everything. At any rate, I put a link to the uh, article online and it's very productive. If anybody is interested in showing Java developers about testing and giving them a little smattering of Spock, that's, that's very helpful there. Speaking of blog posts, uh, then somebody named Sebastian Schultz. I don't know him. Uh, he wrote an interesting blog post called Make Mocking Great Again. Uh, I have to say I have a, a an aversion to that sentence structure these days, as you might imagine. But that takes nothing away from the blog post. What he did was something that I'd never seen before. I, I knew you could take an interface and implement a uh, a map of closures as a way of implementing the interface. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah, with the yes. adopter, what I never realized is you could actually do that with a class as well. So you make a map of closures and say as the name of the class, and you have effectively implemented a mock object where the individual keys in the in the map are the method names that you're mocking in, in the class, and of course the closures become the implementations. Uh, I'd never seen that before. I thought that was really interesting. So he wrote a nice little blog post about it. I wanted to make sure we included that as yep. well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, speaking of JIS, uh, okay, now how do you pronounce it? A10 a Studer? Do you know him? A10 mm, Studer. Other Studer, yeah. Studer, I've definitely seen that name several times. I just don't think I know him personally. He did something which is of seriously questionable utility, uh, but it was amusing. What he did is that he published a gist including a file called speak.gradle. And the idea is that if you make this an init script for your Gradle build, either by you know renaming it init.gradle, putting in your .gradle folder in your home directory, or what he recommended is you go in your home directory dot gradle and put in a, a folder called init.d and put speak.gradle in there. What this does is it intercepts gradle build events and it plays a sound depending on whether you are successful or not on your build. And as you'll be able to see in a moment, let me let me run a gradle build here just to show whether this is a good idea or not. Uh, this is one I have that is successful I hope. Ooh, the under score exercise is build successful. <laughs> Okay, you got that one. Yes, yeah. and uh, so, the, the of course the good the good news about it is that it prevents um, this. You know, you you have a build running, and then you go and do something else in the meanwhile, and oh. the build is is long done. Right. There's this or favor, but you are now c switch the context, and you're doing something else, and you know. So it, so that won't happen anymore because once the build is done, it will grab your attention back to it and yeah, well, here's will go on your way. Just on the downside, here's what it sounds like. I made up a build that was going to fail. Uh, just to give you an idea what that one sounds like. Demo build failed. Gradle script exception. Not a whole lot of information, but something, <laughs> you know. Just well, that, you know that's that. that's all you that's all you need to grab your attention back to the build. It's uh, it's fine. Now I looked at the script and I imagine it, it could go through a few more iterations, but and I don't think it works on anything other than Mac OS X. You know, I I don't think it's got uh, different sounds for different things. It just it was using all sounds that were built into OS X. Uh, and are I, there are there any developers that work with uh, anything else? <laughs> well, perhaps. 
But at any rate, it'll be interesting to see if anybody's interested in that. I, what I do like about it is it is an absolutely, you know, idiomatic classic use of an init script. You know, because yeah. in Gradle, of course, you've got init time, you have uh, a configuration time, and then you have runtime. And a lot of people new to Gradle get those mixed up. And I always have a difficult time explaining the difference between init time and configuration time, because I generally don't have anything going on at init time other than maybe a multi-project build. This is a beautiful example of something that could be done at init time. I just always have to remember to turn it off, because uh, it gets very distracting after a while. Yeah, well, sometimes you do want Oh yeah, you do want it to be you, to distract you, right? Well, and your point is very clear that uh, you've got a particularly long build and you're doing something else while it's going on. That's a great uh, usage of that. So, at any rate, we've got a link in the show notes about that. Now, one of the interesting things that came out of the G3 Summit was the formal announcement that there are there's now the website guides dot gradle dot uh, grails pardon me grails dot org or org right just a yes. Second. Just check. Yeah, guides.grails.org. And there have been two new guides published since we last did a newsy podcast. I mean, we did one podcast from India, but that wasn't really covering the news on that. Uh, one is that uh, Zachary Klein did one on creating your first Grails application. I have to say that that is a highly misleading title, as it turns out, because it goes way, way beyond what you would think of as creating your first Grails app. I mean, you would, you'd get the impression that's just a hello world app and going on. No, no, no. It's got controllers and services and domains, and it's got uh, building the view. It talks about JSON views, and it talks about URL mappings and RESTful web services. I mean, it goes on and on and on. This is quite the extended tutorial and very impressive. So I, I do recommend that those people who are interested in that uh, take a look. It's it's all very clear and understandable, and I think. Uh, and, go ahead. Yeah, and and I, what I want to say is uh, those are all the good things that that happened uh, thanks to the massive recruitment that OCI is doing mm. for uh, for the Grails team and the Groovy team, uh, and and those guys are are perfect example of. You know, something something good is is happening there. There is a lot of content going out there. There is a lot of uh, publicity for Grails going on there, and and I love it. I, that's uh, you know, a Grails moving to OCI from Pivotal was one of the best things ever happened to this framework. Absolutely, and it's really impressive uh, the work that is going on there. As you say, uh, I would say between that that uh, creating your first Grails application guide and the new Grails 3 book, there's a lot going on in a space that very badly needs it. You know, the, the extended documentation of how to use the new Grails. You know, the, the Grails, in, in, my, uh, in my keynote at India, I had to mention that I think the biggest problem Grails has right now is it's a branding problem. You know, how Spring Boot didn't really change Spring at all, but it revitalized the whole ecosystem, partly with the name. Uh, so that maybe Grails needs to be rebranded as Grails Boot, or you know, uh, I have no idea. Uh, Holy Grails, I always like that idea. I don't know, but mm -hmm. at any rate, there's a. You're right. There's a lot going on now. Speaking of OCI and these guides as well, I got two things here. First of all, the other Grails guide that was released relatively recently was one by uh, our friend Sergio Del Amo on testing a secured Grails application. And he creates a functional test of the REST API endpoint that's secured with the Grail Spring Security REST plugin. So all of those things are things that are very highly used. And he even used a JEB spec uh, to, to do a functional test for it. Sergio did one of the best talks I saw at Great Conf in Copenhagen last year on all kinds of features of using JEB. And it's just natural that he would provide a great Jeb spec to go along with the, the rest of that for the secured Grails application test. So I do recommend that guide as well. The other thing about Sergio, of course, is that he announced that he is uh, now an employee of OCI. He's joined the rest of the Grails team there. And you know, you see, uh, you see them picking up just you know the best of the best. And and that's that's very exciting. You th you you think like wow, that's that's a team. That's that's a rock star team, and and those are of course are 
great and, and exciting news. And Sergio put up a blog post, which he entitled, naturally enough, My First Day at OCI. So it's not really about his first day at OCI. It's really about his path of encountering Grails and learning about it and how he built up to the point where he got the opportunity to join that team. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's great. I put a link in the show notes for that as well. So we, we definitely wish him all the best, of course. Uh, I do have to say, by the way, I, I owe him kind of an apology. Uh, I did, in fact, take my Groovy Calamari t-shirt to India, but I forgot to wear it during the podcast. So for what it's worth, I, I do have it on now, uh, my Groovy Calamari shirt there with the, the squid of death. And, and so following your path, uh, I didn't record the podcast in India, so I didn't have the opportunity <laughs> to forget it there, but I forgot it today. So my well, turn will be next time. I think since we've been through a couple of Groovy Calamari since the the name was announced. I think it's probably safe for us to mention it, don't you think, at this point? Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, so apparently the squid's name, and I had kind of challenged him to come up with a name, is uh, Ursula, named after the evil octopus in uh, Little Mermaid, for what yep. that's worth. Um, I, I think, uh, of course, I thought Carrie was a good name, both mm -hmm. as a reference to the sea, even King novel, as well as to Princess Leia, you know, or should I say General Organa, the really impressive one, you know. Um, maybe, maybe who knows, I'll talk to Sergio, maybe Carrie could be her middle name. I don't know. Right? Well, as yeah, okay, out, okay. Or, or a last name for that purpose. Well, I assume her last name is Calamari. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Well, maybe we, yeah, so, so there, is a, there is a lot of work to be done here. Okay, okay. Yeah, we, we really do have more to unpack than that, I suppose. So, uh, at any rate, so it did Congratulations get to, uh, uh, to Sergio, of course. Of course. That's wonderful for him joining the team there. By the way, he sent a little tweet because on our last uh, podcast, we mentioned something about the Twitter handle, Ilopmar, and we're trying to figure out what it, what it stood for. He pointed out that that's uh, Ivan Lopez Martin. Uh, who organizes the Greech conference? So well, I, I, we 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 of course knew Ivan Lopez. We just didn't mention to decrypt his Twitter handle. Yeah, the Martin part I didn't know about that. So at yeah. any rate, what the heck? That's available too. Okay, back <laughs> to, back to news related stuff. Uh, just one minor Twitter related note is that the HTTP Builder NG Twitter account is now live. That's uh, at HTT Builder NG, NG4, as we figured out last time, next generation. Uh, so if you are interested in that HTTP Builder, the next generation API and, and mechanism, we now there's now a Twitter handle you can follow for development. You on that. definitely should be interested if you if you well again going back to the automation REST API DevOps uh, and all that discussion you need a good way to call REST APIs because everything nowadays uh, is about calling REST API and of course the um, HTTP Builder NG looks at the moment like the most promising way to uh, to do it so definitely go ahead and follow them you will need it that's a uh, strong statement on your part I like that now, by the way, you mentioned Paul King uh, in passing. I recall is, of course, another person working now with the OCI team and, and working on Groovy. He did a, uh, a presentation called Make Your Testing Groovy at uh, LinuxConf in Australia. Uh, actually, he, the conference itself was in, was in good old Hobart, Tasmania. Uh, I assume that's probably the southernmost conference that any of us that any of us ever go to uh, i don't <laughs> i assume right. there's not one at mcmurdo station in antarctica at the moment i have no idea but uh, how about that he did a make your testing groovy talk down there and a youtube recording of that presentation is now available uh, anytime you could see paul king or listen to paul king talk about anything it's always worth it and uh, absolutely and of course so i put that in there as well uh one more blog post um uh, that uh came up recently, Guillaume LaForge, who, of course, is still the head of the framework, but now spends a lot of his time with his new employer, with, uh, with Google, wrote a nice little blog post on how to deploy a Rat Pack app on Google App Engine Flex. Now, I don't know Flex. I assume, I mean, the Google App Engine Flex. Is that their answer to AWS Lambda, basically? 
Uh, I, I, I would say so. I, do, I don't know about it a whole lot because uh, if I'm not an error, it's, it's quite new. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is what what it sounds like and what it what it looks like. Yeah, it's it's nice to have an ally inside of Google like that. You know, that someone who's actively going to be introducing Groovy to people who just don't realize what kind of benefits it can give them. Yes, and and I think Guillaume does a great job of combining the two technologies he's passionate about, and of course there there is uh, an endless uh, uh, way to, to combine Groovy with uh, with uh, with Google. So um, it's it's fun to watch. Uh, it, Guillaume takes Groovy to completely new directions that. Um, he kind of forced to be very creative um, to, to promote both of his uh, technologies that he passionate about at the same time. Uh, and uh, we we see some uh, uh, interesting results, great results. And, and I, that's, um, you know, everything is for the best again. And Guillaume being in Google uh, is very helpful, not only for Google, which is of course, uh, but also for, for Groovy. Yeah, I'm assuming at some point there'll be a Java slash Groovy related API for their neural network processing system and TensorFlow and all of those things. Just inevitably with, with Guillaume there, sooner or later that the AI stuff is gonna get wrapped into all that as well. I mean, he's already doing big queries and, and other APIs that they're using. Uh, I just imagine that that's only going to grow over time. A couple last blog posts that posts that I saw. Uh, one was on creating Groovy custom annotations. Uh, Eugene Smirnoff wrote one. It's called creating custom annotations. It's really about building an AST transform. So it's an yes. annotation, but it's an annotation that triggers an AST transform. And of course, any beginner information on that is very helpful because it's it's something that has a bit of a learning curve to it. I mean, the, the Groovy in Action chapter is, of course, excellent, but that's a little definitive. It's nice to have just an introductory post to say, okay, here's how you get up and running on that. So that was nice. Also, somebody named Patrick Double. And, and, and of course, there are, there are, there are tons of ways uh, to do it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and some of them are easier than, than others. Uh, you can use uh, the, um, the Groovy util for that. Uh, or you can just uh, go ahead and, and play and play with uh, um, with plain AST. And uh, the more ways exist to do something, the more confusing it is. So um, that's a that's a good uh, good blog post. And especially the the links at the bottom of it uh, basically cover uh, all the material that that you can get to get started. And especially, of course, the Groovy AST transformations workshop done by um, Cedric Chimpo a couple of years ago. Um, I try to recall. I think it was for Greech. Um, if, or maybe maybe Great Conf Europe. Uh, it was a full day workshop, like like eight hours, and it covers tons of stuff and go through all the possible ways to do it, probably from the beginnings to the more advanced ones. So this um, ST workshop repository in uh, in Cedric's uh, GitHub uh, is is absolutely priceless for that matter. Excellent, excellent. The other blog post I saw was uh, by. Patrick Double called automating testing for generated HTML content using Gradle. So it's again a, a Gradle automated mechanism for testing the generated HTML. Uh, take a look at that if you happen to be interested in it. It's definitely a, a different take on some of these things. It, it's nice to see blog posts related to Groovy coming from outside the usual suspects, you know, somewhat outside the regular community, because it does show that the growth of the language is, is still continuing. Although, apparently, sadly, we may have dropped out of the top 20 in the Tyobi index for a month, but I imagine it'll be back uh, soon. Well, yeah, that's, that's all uh, the... Well, all those games are nice. I don't think any of us took the uh, top 20 thing seriously. We were happy that it's there, but I think we all know more or less where that option stands. We can imagine how the, the growth uh, pace, so... Um, let me just tell you that um, looking at what's going on in OCI, 
that brings tons of optimism to any groovy enthusiast because it's obvious that great things are going on there and and uh, that for sure will will drive more attention and, and more adoption I do think this is going to be a big year for grails uh, we'll have to see how it plays out um, I'm hoping that this is the year that people realize that grails is not the same grails they encountered a few years ago and, and start seeing the benefits from it and the test cases and everything. Um, I, in addition to Eric's book, uh, which we mentioned, I should mention, I'm, I'm going to get a chance to do some, um, a video course recording of a Grails 3 course that'll appear on Safari relatively soon. That recording will probably happen next month in February. Uh, I'll let you know when that's ready. Uh, I should also mention just in passing that, uh, it turns out I'm going to be spending some time working with the Gradle team. Um, Here you go. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to work with them mostly on their Gradle guides, again, on how to get started, how to accomplish tasks that you're interested in, largely on things that are focused on the community as a whole. Um, well, well and, and, you know, being uh, being Kotlin Ken, it's oh, only yeah. natural that you will work with uh, with Gradle. We hope to see a great Kotlin con content uh, out of you. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're we're all very excited. Let's uh, move uh, Kotlin forward with uh, with the help of Kotlin Ken. That's it, what I can it, say it about is, it. It is sadly inevitable that I am going to have to learn Kotlin. I mean, there's just unfortunately no way around it. I have tried to resist it. I still sit there and go, why does everything have to be statically typed? I just don't get it. But all right, you know. I you know what? You know what? I uh, I think it's it's great to learn new things and and yeah. especially good things and and Kotlin. What at least what we hear and see from it uh, looks like a very uh, very good language, and uh, it will definitely bring uh, other perspectives to our podcast and our conversations. So I, for one, really happy that you will uh, learn Kotlin. Well, yes, but that's a much, let's just say that's a very secondary effort compared to what I'll be regularly doing there. Of course. Of on course. those cradle guides. So eventually, yes, of, of course. in fact, I'm, I'm already talking to Jay Zimmerman, our, you know, our fearless leader at the No Fluff, Just Stuff you know, uh, series about doing a Kotlin talk at, uh, at UberConf. You know. So I really, now it's even on the schedule, I really do have to learn this, so. Here you go, uh, here you go, right. And, and uh, funny you know. enough, funny enough, it's the same for me. Um, uh -huh. and, uh, Jay, yeah, so J-Point Conference in April in Moscow that I'm going to attend, um, a very um, serious, um, I would say, very advanced Kotlin, uh, uh, enthusiast uh, uh, Anton Keks from Estonia is going to talk about uh, Kotlin puzzlers uh, because oh. you know he he knows so much about Kotlin that he already managed to find all the all the failing parts and and interestingly failing parts and uh, I'm on my side will be his sidekick to provide the you know the fun part of the puzzlers into it so I will have to pick up some some Kotlin myself and I'm enthusiastically looking forward and um, our conversation about Groovy will definitely be more interesting having that perspective in mind as well yeah well what I heard out of that is you've been giving me a hard time for months when you're the one moving into Kotlin much more soon than I am so, yeah. <laughs> all right but at any rate yes we will of course keep the Groovy message going and working on that. Uh, I should mention again, for those who don't know, the homepage for the Groovy Podcast is nofluffjuststuff.com slash Groovy Podcast. We also have the Groovy Podcast Twitter feed at at Groovy Podcast. Uh, of course, our posts are all available on YouTube and on uh, Podbean and wherever RSS feeds are consumed. So all that stuff will be available. Any Thing you want to mention as a way to wrap up as well any where you're going or anything you're doing coming up well yeah so it's a lot of DevOps as we spoke previously uh, I have DevOps uh, um, DevOps days uh, Charlotte on my plate next week um, and uh, or two weeks from now well next week actually and 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 then um, Oracle code and that's a new series of conferences a uh, by Oracle uh, that I don't know should complement 
probably Java 1, uh, they are much more, again, DevOps oriented as everything those days. Um, that's something to be, to be, um, uh, to keep an eye on. Those are free events. Uh, so the attendance is, is completely free. And I think I sign up to a bunch of them to give some uh, talks. Uh, and they come in tons of different uh, cities uh, across the world, actually. So I guess I will meet uh, all our five viewers in hope to meet uh, on one of the conferences here or there. That's the first I've heard of that. So good luck with that. I'll definitely be interested in hearing more about it. Uh, the next major conference I'll be attending, I guess, will be Dev Nexus in February. Will you be going Yeah, to we will meet there, absolutely, and record the Groovy podcast. Yeah, we'll definitely do a podcast from there. Uh, and then after that, I suppose, in the beginning of March is when the No Fluff series starts again. Uh, so we'll, we'll be back to our regular schedule then. Uh, we'll probably try to schedule another Groovy podcast uh, in, you know, two to three weeks, as usual. And it's just really good seeing you again. Yep. So, uh, of you course. Take of course. care, and, and we'll we'll publish this as soon as possible. And of course, anybody who needs to reach us, feel free to use any of the normal mechanisms. And the show notes are are in the um, the GitHub repository as usual. There's a link right off of the nofluffjuststuff.com slash groovy podcast homepage. Okay. Yep. Until next time, you take care. Yeah, it was it was great to see you, and uh, see you all next time. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.